Wow, wow. I don't know if, if I am really worthy of all of those nice words, but thank you. Um, first, I want to say welcome. It's great to see you all. So many new faces. I am delighted about that. Um, next, I'd like to say about the education. And yes, uh, General Dempsey, I did know, um, certainly had his degrees in English. Uh, Steve and I, um, well, I'll just tell you briefly. So we dated and were engaged long distance. And so I am a letter writer, and I used to write constantly. And Steve, he called two and three times a week, which was lovely, but, you know, I just would like a letter, something I could look back at. So I kept saying, you know, it would be so nice. And okay, he sends me a letter. At the time, I was uh, going off my master's, and I was teaching at a high school, local high school. So I would tell him stories of, you know, students and poor writers and all of that. And so he sends me a letter, and oh, I'm elated, you know, a two-page letter, whoa. So because we have this very joking kind of open relationship at that time, you know, I took my red pen, <laughs> and I went over the letter, uh, you know, circling, sentence fragment, run on, uh, wrong, I put something, in, incorrect punctuation, blah, blah, blah. Um, and sent it to him <laughs> back, you know, it's just, yeah. And so uh, about five days later, I, I get a phone call. You will never get a letter from me again. <laughs> never. And I said, it was a joke. I was kidding. I was just kidding. He said, no. And to this day, no letters. Yes, cards, lovely cards. No letters. Okay. But that's all said. Um, just wanted a, a moment of levity. Anyway, I am, again, elated that you're all here because we're here for one mission, one cause, and that's for the families of the military. Um, I, too, wow, let's see. We, I started my journey 20 years ago. We're married 20 years. And I, we, let's see, I started when Steve was a major, and I knew nothing about the military. And when I say nothing, I mean, I didn't know rank. I didn't know, honestly, uh, I could tell you funny stories, but I, I don't want to waste your, your good time. But um, when we went out to a function, our first duty station was Bamberg, beautiful place, Germany. And we went out to a function, and I said to Steve, just tell me, um, how do I know who's who? You know, who is a major, who is a, uh, I don't know, a sergeant or whatever. He said, oh, that's easy, Madeline. It's it's what they wear. So coming from Catholic high school, I thought readily, oh, too easy. Because I know freshmen wear, in my school anyway, they wore, like I want to say, slacks and a vest. And sophomores wore a skirt and a vest. Anyway, you're getting the drift. So they had different clothes, which would signify their rank or their station in school. So I'm seeing everybody. And at the time, you were all wearing BDUs. And I am greeting people. Oh, hi. I'm thinking I'm such a smarty, you know. I'm reading names on the uniform and saying, hi, Major Smith. Hi, Major Jones. Hi, you know. And Steve's looking at me. What are you doing? I said, I'm greeting everyone because they all have your uniform on. They're majors. <laughs> it, was, it was painful. Those few weeks, the first weeks were painful. He started shaking his head. It's this, Madeline, is showing me whatever, you know, rank. I said, it doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm not going to be staring at people's necks. So you're, you're out. You're out, babe. They're all majors. That's what I think. But um, at any rate, of course, I soon took, uh, walked into our Army family team building. Actually, my husband walked me into them and said, she needs you. And I took all the classes and really enjoyed it so much, I began to teach Army family team building and found it so rewarding. And it always put people at ease when I told them my stupidity, or I should say, pardon me, lack of knowledge. Um, I, think, I think others kind of shared that, but didn't want to say. Anyway, um, so we began our journey 20 years ago. And I must tell you that I've met some incredible people. And as I'm sure you can all agree in your journey. And I've learned so many things. I actually, um, well, I, I guess I've learned some things that I want to keep, and I've also learned some things that I would discard. Uh, when we got married, my mom bought me 
uh, tools of the trade. And if anyone is familiar with that, that is um, pots and pans and whatever. I think she bought them in Macy's. So it's a whole slew of, you know, your tools of the trade. Well, much to her chagrin and Steve's chagrin, I've, I barely use those tools. But I do use other tools. And these are tools that I have gathered through our travels. Um, they're hints. They're lessons learned. They're things that I have used with people, we used, I mean, how I relate to people and how I see others relate. Simple things like when you're talking about building a team. Well, we know the team, whether it be family team building or last night I sat at my son's uh, freshman football game and I'm watching this team. They, they need some of my tools, I think. But um, no, they won the game. They were good. But um, my son's never played football before. So it was quite painful for me to watch um, as, you know, the conflict. Anyway, um, but I started thinking about those young fellas who will need to learn tools, as we all do, in any group that we enter, in any group we interact in. And I thought, I think first and foremost, you'd all agree, it's good to have a goal. It's good to have a mission, an intent. And I have to concur um, with Tom James that communication is key. You cannot in any way, shape, or form assume that the people you're interacting with at an FRG meeting, at uh, an event, at a hail and farewell, know what you intend unless you communicate it. So first and foremost, when forming your FRGs, when interacting, it's got to be communication. And I fear that today that's not as um, commonly understood as it was years ago. And I know I'm dating myself. But as I saw with many college students um, in DC when I was teaching at Marymount University, they just did not know how to interact because it's this. And it's, you know, you're on the machine and you are texting and, and they're telling me, oh, this girl just broke up with me on a text. And I'm thinking, that is the lamest thing I've ever heard, but uh, cowardly maybe. But it, it, what I'm getting at is I think that in today's society, the finer skills of communicating, face-to-face -face communication is somewhat lacking um, or are somewhat lacking. I think that we need to greet people with a smile. I think that we need to embrace the commonality that we share, and that is our mission, our belief in the greatest country in the world and the greatest people in it. So first and foremost, communication. And yes, that includes written word, contrary to my husband's theory on this, but no, I'm kidding, he does write notes. To, he writes notes to soldiers, very interesting. I, I leave it at that, not so much to me. But um, what I mean is, so making contact, making a connection, and communicating, all those C words. Communicating, yes, you, using social media. When forming an FRG, it's integral in today's world to, yes, communicate through social media. But don't rely on social media. And that's coming from a social media dinosaur. So I guess that's why I have to start and get that out there. I think it's great. It's the greatest way to reach the most people. But is it a personal way? Maybe not. Things get misinterpreted. Things can get easily um, relayed in an incorrect fashion. It's always good to connect by verbal. So that would be one thing that I have in my toolkit, um, as I'm telling you, tools for the trade, for I call them Madeline's Tools of the Trade for team building. Um, we have to think about ways to bring people together. Okay, so as I said, I would be talking about face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact, asking questions, really listening to what people say. And I know that sounds, I know you've heard it over and over again, but how many times do we do it? And I see it so much with my 14-year-old who has the TV on, I'm making dinner, and he's texting or Insta, whatever, Instagram. And I, I have to, I lose it. I say something to him, and he doesn't, <coughs> pardon me, move. 
And I say, did you hear me? <clears throat> oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I think it's allergies. Anyway, I say, Raymond, did you hear me? Oh, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. He had nothing. And so five minutes later, when, of course, the task is not completed, I lose it. And <laughs> I just see it so often. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. So, again, I'm not saying that those things are bad, social media, but the idea of concentrating eye to eye uh, is a good thing. It's a really great thing. And it makes people feel valued. You think enough of them to put aside whatever it is you were doing at the moment. Another idea that, um, well, I'm just talking about team building, basically. I'm thinking so many people, when, I, when, I, when people ask me about FRGs, I have three main tenets. Uh, one of them is communicate. The second is respect. You need to respect each other. And by that I mean, that means I would not like somebody um, saying something rude or profane to me when I'm at a meeting, so I wouldn't do it. Now, if I disagree with somebody, I will say something, but in a respectful manner. There's nothing wrong with disagreement. In fact, I foster it. In fact, I live it since my husband and I are quite different. So disagreement is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. That's how people grow. But you have to be open to it. And there's the next tenant, being open and don't take things seriously. That's not right, sorry. Don't think, take things personally. We tend to have a great idea. I know, I've, I've been there. And you wanna share it and you're all excited. And somebody says, well, that's the lamest thing I have ever heard. And it's like, oh. So for the first minute, you can't help but feel bad. <laughs> like, that was my idea. But that's OK. I have learned over and over again to smile, step back a moment, and then, OK, so maybe that's not the best. There, in my, in my idea, or my, I guess according to my life, there are no wrong ideas. There are wrong times or inappropriate times for certain things. But the ideas aren't wrong. I, I wouldn't spend my life ripping down somebody. But instead, if someone disagrees with me, I'd like to know, OK, great. So what do you think? I mean, do you have some ideas? Not to put that person on the spot, but so that you can turn it into a learning moment for everybody. So it's hard. It really is. We're all human. But you need to concentrate and try your best not to take it personally. Even though you're crumbling inside, like, that was my, I, I was thinking about this idea for long. I planned it. I planned. I've been there. But you have to just sort of take a step back. And that's what I fear we don't do a great deal. We tend to be in, and we're up front and right away on the defensive. Think about it. Nothing really gets done. And again, if we get back to mission, or to intent. We're here for a reason. We join the groups, we help each other, we build our community for a reason. So if you let emotions get too close or hot, that, that intent kind of fades away and it becomes more, I'm worried about me, it's my show. It's never just one person's show. It's everybody. That's the only way we get things done, ever. I mean, in the military, in the corporate world, in education, and certainly in the units. It has to be an all kind of thing. Um, so how do we get everybody involved? How do you, well, I'm gonna ask you, what do you think, how do you get people involved? So I'm not just talking at you. Um, nobody gets anybody involved. <laughs> I'm sure that that's true. Well, I will tell you one funny story. So, not funny, but, when Steve was a brigade commander, and we were, oh, I won't even tell you where we were. But, um, so we had, there were seven brigades in the division. And so the seven brigade spouses were very close. We joked around because the guys were, you know, gearing up for going to uh, a deployment to Iraq. Okay. Um, we had a senior leader at the time, and she was very... Mm, 
let's say, authoritative about certain things. And so, um, now remember I said, you meet people along your journey and some of them, you learn certain things and you put them in your little tool bag, tool bag and other people you learn what maybe you don't want to do. Well, this person um, pulled us aside, the brigade spouses, after one of our like community updates sort of things and said, Okay, she had a list. I like lists, but not this kind of list. She had a list of things that we were to tell our battalion commander spouses and FRG leaders what to do. I mean, a list. This is what we need. This is what we're doing. And I think that there are seven of us, as I said. I think six of them were, is shell shot the right expression? Shell shot? No? You know when you're shocked. Okay, okay. So, so when you're, you're totally shocked. And they're looking at her, and she was not, let's just say you had to take her seriously. She was not joking. And I stood there, and no one said anything. And it's not, not, not because it, uh, I'm so great. It's not. I just said, I can't. And she looked at me. What? I said, I can't ask volunteers to do all of this. Well, your husband would, t if, if he had things that had to get done, he would tell his, his soldiers to do them. I said, well, he would probably do them with his soldiers, but th that's apples and oranges. You see, they're paid. They wear uniforms, that's their job. These are volunteers. And I'm not going to voluntold or voluntell them to do it. Well, this was not going over well. And nobody, okay, all my buds, right? My, we're so strong, the brigades. Yeah, did they come in and help me out? No, ah, just watched me sink at that point. <laughs> I said, ladies, and they were all taking notes and all of this, and I said, I am sorry, and I am not meaning this in disrespect, but I really can't do this. Well, Madeline, then we'll have to get somebody else who can. And I'm thinking, what is she doing, kicking me out? Uh, I'm, I am married to that guy. You want to find somebody else? <laughs> but um, I got her point. She just wasn't used to hearing that this is not, uh, you know, my, her way was not going to be um, followed. And it turned out that five of us kind of after about two weeks of talking, chickens, 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 but anyway, um, decided you know, that we weren't going to do all of these mandates. Um, nothing, there were no repercussions, though they were worried. I mean, some of the ladies were worried. I, I really did not even think of the repercussions. I was thinking, honestly, maybe later I thought about it, but at that moment it was just, I can't ask these great ladies to do these things. That's I mean, I'll do them before I ask anybody, and I'm still not asking them. That's, that's not right. Um, volunteers are gold. They're golden. Um, I have been a volunteer for many, many years, and I do it because I love it, and I'm sure that that's what you all do. So how can anybody think for a second that they can be taken for granted? They can't. So... Uh, now I ask you again. So, okay, so I needed, um, in this same situation, I met with the battalion commander's spouses every month, um, and I started with a lunch at my house, and I said, this is informal, this is not work, I just want to get to know you guys, and maybe we can plan some fun things. And one of the battalion spouses stood up and said, in my house, I don't play army. I said, Okay, then. So <laughs> she said, Madeline, I don't mind meeting for lunch occasionally, but I don't, I don't do this. I'm done. You know, I've been in this whole thing for whatever, 20-something years, and um, I love my husband, but I said, you know what? This is before the deployment. I said, I respect that. Everybody, you know, the other ladies are like, what, what's happening? Um, I said, all I need is somebody, then maybe somebody in the unit, um, can be the conduit, can be the person that I'll be sending out information, newsletter to. So as long as you give me another name, I'm good to go. No, pro no problem. So we finished our lunch. Everything was great. The next couple of months, she, was, she never came uh, to a lunch again. 
And after about maybe four months, three or four months, all of a sudden she started coming. And I welcomed her with open arms. It was like, I mean, she's a great, great gal. And we started talking, and when I was looking for ideas, she'd always have a good idea. Or when she, um, I looked for volunteers at one point, I said, no, you guys don't have to volunteer. Do you know anybody who would be interested? She was the first one. And I found that really interesting. In fact, we did a couple of projects together that um, I'm so, so proud of. We did, and Steve was in, I don't remember where, but anyway, Iraq. And he, I asked him to collect pictures from the young children in school, the second, third, and fourth graders in Iraq. And then we collected pictures from CYS, um, from American children, and we, put them together with the help of the division commander at the time, and uh, commander spouse, and then we made a poster out of it and we called it Freedom Through the Arts. And the only person who worked with me day and night is that battalion commander spouse who didn't want to play. She did not want to play. We became such good friends, we are still in contact. Uh, they're no longer in the military. But what we did with that poster, by the way, is we, um, so it's a nice poster, and we put, like, the Iraqi next to the American. Uh, interesting, and I shouldn't say it, but the Iraqi work, artwork, was so much better than ours. <laughs> okay, I didn't say it. Um, anyway, so then we sold these posters for $10, and we couldn't send money to Iraq, so we sent art supplies. Um, and the title was Freedom Through the Arts, Baghdad... Um, Fort Hood. Ooh. Should just, yes. Okay. So um, it was it was a great great project, and I was so so happy. I honestly I didn't think anybody would step up. It, it was my kind of idea with the division commander spouse, and I thought I'm just going to do it all. Doesn't matter. But it was so wonderful that she did. So what I'm saying is, to enlist people doesn't mean to tell them to do things. To ask, to smile, to joke, to maybe even take that initial, no way, I'm not doing it. And then go about it as best you can and see what happens. So how do you get people to do things? Okay. I was going to say, you know, the one good point you made about how so much has gotten lost with social media. Yeah. And I know, you know, some of the feedback I get from younger spouses is, why should I show up to something if I'm already getting all the information passed down in emails or on the Facebook page? So I think it's important at our level, at the FRG leaders level, just to connect with people one on one, whether that's just calling them, introducing, you know, yourself. I mean, meeting up for coffee, and you know, you don't even have to discuss, hey, this is what our FRG is doing. Just having that foundation first before then, you know, if they're receptive, then I think you can introduce, you know, information or if you need, you know, volunteers, treasures, whatever. But just making that, like you said, face to face connection or phone call. I mean, I try to do that with all my FRG leaders. Just I mean, we don't even have to talk about FRG. You want to go to coffee? You want to go to lunch? Let's do it. Just, you know, having that connection that so much of that's been lost with emails and, you know, Facebook and all of that. Absolutely. Oh, I thank you for saying that because I've, I have found that time and again. And um, what I think is a danger, and I'm a, I'm a word person, um, but I think there is a real danger in just relying on email or Facebook or any of them because one word can change an entire discussion, can change an entire dynamic. I'll give you an example. Um, one of my favorite authors, Kate Chopin, wrote a short story. Um, the, it, well, anyway, it was part of the awakening. Don't want to be turning this into an English lesson. But um, one line in the story Okay, this very short, short story was, she loved her husband. Okay, you have, you have a kind of an, you can begin to interpret the character by that. She put one word, she loved her husband sometimes. So think about that. I mean, we can joke about it because that's somehow, times how I feel. But, um, <laughs> but the truth is, what I'm saying is that one word sometimes changes the whole interpretation by the reader 
Is that saying they didn't have a good relationship? Is that saying they had an on again, off again relationship? Is that saying she loved him? I mean, well, better than anything or more than anything. What I'm saying is that one word. So when you use words in emails, and we all do, you don't have any kind of tone that gets translated, right? It's just words. And oftentimes, you don't know which words are inflammatory to somebody else or which words may lead in a direction of a different connotation, a different emotional response. That's a danger zone. Not saying don't use that media, saying complement it with the face-to-face. -face. If you know me and I, I write you an email, chances are you're going to interpret it according to the spirit in which I intended because you know me. I don't mean know me, know, but I mean if I've met you and I've chatted with you, as you say, if you go up a phone call, you don't have to ask about F R G. How is how are the children? What's going on? When we had battalion command um, and the guys were in NTC a few times, I know one time it was over um, Valentine's Day, and wow, this is years ago, so it's before these massive deployments that we faced forever. But uh, so the women were. For the most part, these were all women. The spouses were very downtrodden. I mean, you know, I mean, without my husband on Valentine's Day, and okay, so we're trying to think, what can we do? What can we do? So I just decided, okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna deliver. I I made little hearts, and in them a, a little heart card, inexpensive, nothing. I didn't have money. Uh, put a Hershey kiss in the middle, and said thinking of you, happy Valentine's Day, and delivered them. Delivered them to the FRG leaders, the um, FRG advisors, the battalion, the not only commander, the command team spouses. Little thing like that. The ladies were so happy. Nothing. Did it cost me anything? No. Did it take me a little bit of time? Maybe. But I loved it. So. You can reach out in so many different ways. And I see great ways every place I go. Um, I look at, I don't know if, if she's here, uh, Jeanette Turner. Jeanette Turner, you probably know. Um, she has a library uh, in front of her house. She has, would you call that like a, a birdhouse or something? And in it, it's a lending library. She's inviting her, not just her people, but the community but certainly putting it out to her unit. What a beautiful idea that is. Saying, hey, if you want to read a book or just come and take a look, feel free. If you leave a book, fine. If not, no big deal. Think of that. What it, that solidifies, that action solidifies a, a feeling of community within a unit. Uh, there's so many great ideas out there. I can't even tell you that I have seen. And yes, I wrote a lot of them in my tool book. Uh, but I think that you all have great ideas. So how else do you get people to come um, to an event or to an FRG meeting? You threaten them. No. OK, well. We offer, um, we offer like a, a face style like dinner. You have them like at night and everything. Perfect, perfect. That's awesome. Um, food, you know, if you serve it, they will come. I mean, it's a typical thought. So that's a perfect idea. Of course, another good idea is, you know, I've ascribed to if you have a glass of wine, they'll come. So, okay, either way you look at it, you can bring people together. Make it a social event. It doesn't have to be, bless you, it doesn't have to be work-related. You can talk about other things, and then maybe if an issue like planning the Christmas ball or something comes up. So it, it's a question really of connection, really making people feel together, feel connected. If you take a look at the stats of, um, well, I don't like to talk about bad things, but people who um, drift away from society or turn to alcohol or drugs, a lot of it is written, uh, well, they have found connection, the lack of connection. People aren't relating to other people, don't know how to cope, perhaps, 
and rely on other mechanisms. So wouldn't it be great to be somebody's coping mechanism? I know I have a good friend. Um, she lives in New York, and she calls me, oh, I don't know, once at least once a month, if not more. And we will spend an hour on the phone, and I will listen for about 45 minutes. And then she'll say, oh, there you go again. You're really helping me. I didn't say anything. I didn't say a word. I'm just holding the phone. But that's all she needed to do was talk. And that is a connection for me because I just love her dearly. And to listen to her is fun. It's fine. What I'm saying is there are different ways to connect. I know, I know that you have it in you to do so. Um, so a couple of the things that I put down on this little sheet, which I did not make copies of, but I'd be happy to at another point. Um, have fun. One, one important thing I have found is in any group that I have led or been a member of, the most vital element is fun. I know, you know, I used to say that to my mother. Um, but ma, it's not fun. When I was, <laughs> before we got married um, later in life, and so my mother reminded me that, of course, and I, I would say to her, um, but mom, he's just not fun. And she'd be like, now then grow up. He does not have to be fun. He has to be a provider, da, 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 you know, the mother thing. Um, and then after we got married, and um, I would tell her things, she'd say, but is that fun? I, well, aren't you the one who told me it's not fun? Yes, and by the way, it is fun. What I'm trying to get at is people seem to think that fun is, oh, that's what little kids do. They just play and they have fun. Why can't we all have fun? Why can't we all smile and play? Um, so my, one of my rules in my two book is it has to be fun, or why bother? Why bother do it? Um, the other thing I keep coming back to is certainly to smile um, face to face. I'm just going through this quickly. So I had, um, okay, I knew some people who worked in IBM years ago, and talking about words, the way that we really reach out to people, in IBM, there were no problems. There were never any problems. A manager would be fined if he said, there's a problem, you know, if he said someone in his, to his, depart in his department. It's not. There are opportunities. So the manager would say, John, you have an opportunity here to excel. Not, you have a problem, you better fix it. Totally different reception. He's motivating his employee instead of saying, you know, reading him the riot act and saying, you've got to get this in line. That's a beautiful thought. I loved hearing that. That's what we should be concentrating on. Empowering, empowering, excuse me, each other, helping each other to do great things, inspiring. And it is as simple as choosing the right word and saying it with a smile. Does it cost you anything? No. Uh, compliments are a really free way, also, of bringing people together, bringing people to you. Not false, not making things up. But if you see somebody, I mean, how many times have you seen someone who has a really pretty, well, I don't know, gentlemen, if, if you would say this, but, uh, you know, a lovely shirt, uh, a great uniform, I don't know. And you think it, but you don't say it. Why? Why are we so cheap? with kindness, kind words, wow, they are so powerful. <laughs> you, don't, you don't diminish yourself by saying something kind to somebody else. No, you, you raise both of you up. That is a beautiful thing. Because let's face it, we're around for a really short time. So why make our, our lives or other people's lives ugly? Instead, build, build something an FRG, a group, a connection. Does anybody have any questions? I don't want to be talking at you and you're like, when is she going to shut up? That's OK. I don't bite. What were some of the things that you did to bring people to FRG meetings? What were, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you heard me. No, I did. I got you. I got you. 
Um, I, I planned theme parties. I do like that, the theme party thing. So I'd have an FRG meeting, and I would give everybody, like around Halloween, give everyone a little pumpkin with candy in it, and maybe write a note, maybe if I had the time to write a note. Um, I would send out an invite, and each person would get a quote in the invite. And then I'd ask them to get come, here's the teacher, I know, to get come to the meeting and share the quote, maybe talk about it. And some people really hated that. So I know, and I know because, so we had a cocktail party the other night, and of course, I had to play a game. My husband hates to play games at these things, but I really like it. I mean, we knew each other, and I thought it would just be something fun, really simple game. Um, but uh, he always, my husband, no, don't do it, Madeline. People are here to relax. Good, relax and play a game. If you don't want to play the game, okay, that's fine. But make someone smile or laugh. Wouldn't it be great that we could share something besides conversation about our day-to-day -day work? Yay. As far as bringing people to FRGs, or um, I would have an FRG meeting. Actually, I'm thinking back to when we were in Kansas uh, at a roller, roller skating rink. And oftentimes, if you go to a place, you speak to a manager, they will work out a discount for you for if you say you're going to bring 20 or 15 people in. And sometimes I would have them bring their children too because that's fun. And the kids are having fun. The parents are relieved, and maybe they'll want to talk a little bit. Have a popcorn party. Just have popcorn all over the house. I mean, in little containers. <laughs> come, come, <laughs> not all, not all over the floor. No, no, it would not be good. But um, have a dog walking party. Not even a party, but meet everybody at the corner. Now you see, this one I haven't done because I have a dog who would. He does not play nice with other people or other dogs. He would take off, but it, I've seen people walk the streets together with their dogs. And my dog is, no, no. He just runs away. So, um, so there are so many things. I mean, you could have a painting party. Maybe if, you, maybe if you're getting ready for something, whether it be a party or a holiday, have people come over to paint signs. I mean, there's so many ways, and I'm sure, I, I'm so sure that if I went around the room and you, whoa, it's disco. Um, so yeah, yeah, start dancing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, am I leaning on that? Yes. <laughs> Technologically, I am quite the dinosaur. So I would not even have known I was pushing the button, but it did look good, didn't it? Um, anyway. So I know that you guys have great ideas, and you're just holding back. But that's really the value of these kind of things, um, to network, talk to people, ask questions of each other, because you have great ideas. Um, sometimes we just don't want to unleash them, or you don't want to say anything. So we have no questions, none at all. I'm not hurt. I'm not worried. I'm not taking it personally. Don't worry. Well, I just want to leave you then with um, just a thought that I think the, the beauty in, in so many things are, are simple, simple things. And if you can bring it down a notch, we don't have to spend money. We don't have to um, kind of do cartwheels to impress people, but the, the really best things are the kindest, uh, simplest things. So there's an expression in writing, when I teach writing, it's um, kiss, you may have heard this. It's keep it simple, stupid. It's really what it is. I, I don't write the stupid on the papers, I just write K-I-S-S. -S. Because what happens uh, many times for young writers, they tend to write a lot, you know, uh, kind of, a diarrhea of the pen thing, you know, go on and on and on. And the key is to keep it simple so that your point is clearly received and understood in writing. And that's what I say too when interacting with people. You don't have to go and do anything traumatic or dramatic. Just be yourself. Be honest. 
Be honest. Somebody asks a question at one of your get-togethers, and you don't know the answer. The best thing you can do, and nine times out of ten, it's not done, is to say, I don't know. It doesn't make you look stupid. It doesn't make you look weak. It makes you look human. How could you know everything? I know. I like to tell my husband I do know everything, but it isn't true. It's not true. Um, so by saying, I don't know, but you know what? I'll get you that answer. I will find out and take a note and do follow up on it. That's, that's empowering. That's strengthening everyone because you're admitting that you don't know everything. Now the audience can feel really good because maybe they're thinking they don't know everything too. Okay, well, I thank you so much for your time and your attention. Um, enjoy the rest of the day.